Welcome back, RVP Nation, and we're downtown Racine right now in the uh, downtown RVP studio, and today we're going to be interviewing the wonderful, amazing Martha Warfield. Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay. I am so sorry. Marsha Warfield. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how was the trip over here? But what? You said you were from Las Vegas? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I came in. I flew in uh, on a red eye um, Thursday, Friday. It was both Thursday oh, yeah. and Friday. Yeah. And I got in in the morning and it was fine. Yeah. And then uh, you get, you're coming from Kenosha. Have you ever been up here in the southwest or southeast Wisconsin? I don't know that I've been to Kenosha. I have been in Wisconsin before. It was many years ago. And um, I wish I had a sordid story to tell about that, but I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> I thought I had never seen uh, hills. You know, I, I yeah. had never appreciated what a rolling hill was. You know, a hill was a hill. I'm All from right. Chicago. We have skyscrapers. We don't have hills. So yeah. <laughs> I thought it was pretty and green and people were nice. Yeah, that's the that's the Wisconsin way. We're all, we all have the, oh, what did you say? The what did you call it before? The Wisconsin, the Midwest, the Midwest nice. nice. And well, yeah, I thought Supposed you were gonna say they were all green and rolling. Uh, cheese, we're cheese, we're <laughs> cheese. And the beer, and beer, beer and pizza and brat. <laughs> yeah, no, it's more cheese curds than pizza. <laughs> oh no, and not in Kenosha. Oh, not in Kenosha. No, 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 no. Because I've actually literally covered the pizza contest <laughs> that they have every year. <laughs> Understand. Yeah. So, uh, so you grew up in Chicago, you said? Yes. How was that? It was the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, so it was always interesting. It All was right. an interesting time. Yeah. And Which is a curse, right? You some know, days. That's a curse. It made you live in inter interesting times. Yeah. <laughs> Depends nice. on what kind of interesting what brand that is. But you're actually here uh, tonight. You're going to be at the, the a show, doing a comedy show in Kenosha. That's correct. So that should correct. be fun. It was. It was fun last night, and it last should night. be even more fun tonight. Um, it's a great, great club, and I've been treated uh, wonderfully, and uh, the, the owner is here, and so I have nothing but nice things to say. <laughs> Because he's driving. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey. Serial, do you want to tell a little bit more of like the backstory of, of Marsha and, oh, and kind of. Sure. I think Marsha could tell. Marsha can tell the backstory, but you know, but you've got a little bit of framework. You were, you were doing all your research okay, and, yeah. and she, he now knows who Richard Pryor is. Ooh. So yeah, I'm obviously. He's caught up. <laughs> yeah. I'm not as, I haven't been here as long as you guys. Okay, well. So I, I don't know very much, but, uh. I did learn a little bit about you in this past, like past few hours because I have seen you before, but like I didn't remember from from where. And I found you on in the in Living Color, the show. I did make uh, yeah a couple of appearances on yeah, the show. That's probably where I remember you from the most. But I wanted to ask you a question: How did you go from Chicago, living in Chicago, to appearing in Hollywood and uh, eventually having your own talk show? How did that all come about? Well, I took a plane. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night I, no i um i started doing stand-up in chicago oh okay. and uh, in the 70s early 70s the whole uh entertainment industry was shifting um the, the old supper club models the dinner shows and and uh the, the first run theaters and studio movies, all of that was dying. And so new things were coming about. There were uh, black exploitation became a thing. It became more opportunities on television and in, in movies, you know, for uh, black performers. And then the Tonight Show moved from New York to Los Angeles and the whole focus of the business shifted coasts. And so Los Angeles became the place to be. All kinds of, uh, all the whole industry moved uh, out of New York. And in Chicago, there was no such thing as comedy club. 
comedy clubs were pretty much new. The comedy store started in 73. Mm -hmm. um, the improv was in New York, but they did music and comedy, but they had moved to Los Angeles. So everything kind of came together. And uh, in uh, 1974, Tom Dreesen, who was uh, part of a comedy team, Tim and Tom, the first interracial comedy team in the country. They had split up. Tim Reed left and was, uh, got a part on WKRP in, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And uh, <laughs> Tom was still doing stand-up, but there weren't places to practice to work. So um, they had open mic nights at the Comedy Store and the Improv. And Tom started an open mic night at the Pickle Barrel in Chicago. What was that like? Well, I read an article in the paper. <laughs> the, not an art. Yeah, it was an article that featured it and talked about it. And they said that anybody could come up and try out. And I said, I'm going to do that. I was working at the phone company at the time. I was switchboard operator. You were Ma Bell. Operator. <laughs> in <laughs> long distance. And so... Um, I told a friend of mine I was going to go down there and try it. And then I never went. Yeah. And so one day she came to my house and told me to get dressed. We're going down there. I'm tired of you talking about it and never going. Let's go. And uh, she prodded me until I went down. She went and told Tom I was a new comedian and wanted to go on stage. He said, fine. And about 2 o'clock that morning... I went on stage to seven comedians and three people at a table and four people cleaning up. Wow. So what what was the hook, though, that kept you going back to comedy and, and pulled you through and made that your life's work? Uh, a light shone down from above uh, when I when I went on stage, and it was... It was a calling. It was there was no question after that. There was no thought. There was just no question after that moment. It was a hallelujah moment, and I was uh, at an age where that's all I needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I was twenty years old, and uh, I had been married and divorced, and had no idea what I was really wanted to do. And I was working at the phone company with my mother. My mother worked there. And uh, living at home at that point, and when I went on stage and came off, and the response was positive, and it was just, you know, yeah, there's yeah. a voice speaking to me. So when you were when you were in those early days of becoming a comedian, like, how did you decide what types of jokes you wanted to tell and what? What was funny to you, and how did you like set set that up? Like w when you were trying to figure out w what you were going to be, and what what did that process look like? I didn't do that. No, you just <laughs> you turned on the that. switch. You said, oh, "Okay, I, comedy's I, there." Yeah. I very like I said, yeah. I didn't think about it. It just I trusted my instincts, Interesting. and I just said. If I write it, if I think it's funny, then that's my style. I don't want to, to say I want to be a, this kind of comic and then try to become that. I wanted to become the kind of comic comedian that I am. And so I figured let's just let that happen however it happens and that will be my thing. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so what's your question? My question? Your question. Uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Well, He's learning. <laughs> back on the topic of uh, you starting comedy, uh, what was your, what was your like routine? Because you said you didn't like, did you plan it out before you went on stage, what you were going to say? Or did you just like improv it when you got there? Yes. You like, just like, it just came, whatever came to mind? No, I did both. Oh, you did uh, both? Okay. I, then I think you have to do both. Yeah. You have to be ready. You don't know what's going to happen in the room. You don't know. Um, you don't know much of anything when you, when you start talking, you just start talking. Uh, so you need an opening line. 
something to introduce yourself. And I uh, went on stage. I said, good evening. My name is Marsha Warfield, and I'm a virgin. So please be kind. <laughs> <laughs> that was my opening. And that was because Tom introduced all the new acts as virgins. And so I said, I'm the virgin. And that stuck. And I just, again, wrote from there. I wrote what I thought was funny. Yeah. And uh, there weren't a, a, any or very many women uh, stand-up monologists just uh, grab the mic and talk. And there were not very many black women doing stand-up. Right. There weren't a lot of women doing any kind of stand-up. Well, it was the 70s. Was improv yeah. or yeah. in the early 70s. Yeah. And so I didn't really have anybody to model myself. I didn't have any expectations. I didn't... Was that good uh, that you that you Worked for have, me. Yeah, <laughs> it know, did work for you. I yeah, don't yeah. know if everybody, you know, Vicki Lawrence, on the other hand, right. who's a, a very funny woman, became uh, Carol Burnett's protege and so learned from Carol Burnett. And that was a perfect way for her. And so if you want to be in this business, I think you have to understand that there is no way to make it. There is your way to do it. Uh, uh, no two people, even if they're brother and sister, even if they're in the same, they don't make it the same way. Everybody has their own path. And so if you start looking for, oh, you got to do this, then you got to do that, then you gotta, you're going to miss the opportunities and the things that come to you uh, that, that would have been really good lessons and good opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So like when, okay, so t tell me how you met Richard Pryor and, and what that experience was like and being um, with him and, and was that, where were you at with, in your career at that time? I was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was a baby. I, I left Chicago when I was 22, on my 22nd birthday. And I left Chicago, and ooh, my mouth is dry. But not long after that, because um, I went to the comedy store right away. When I got to Chicago, it was a birthday <laughs> present from my mother. Because I told her I was going to hitchhike to Los Angeles. I was going to Los Angeles. I didn't care what anybody said. And she said, well, if that's what you're going to do, I'll give you a trip, you know. And, uh, and you have two weeks to see what's what. And so she gave me a two-week vacation uh, at the Continental Hyatt House, which was right next door to the comedy store. And so I started going to the comedy store as soon as I got to town. As soon as I landed, I couldn't wait and started working there. And Richard was known to show up and work on his material for his upcoming albums. What did you think of him? Oh, he was, no, uh, without question, yeah. God. Uh, he, there's and you said to yourself, I've just met God? Pretty much. Okay. And I, I approached him pretty much, you know, I, I met him quite a few times, worked with him. And he was always cordial and sweet, and nice and fun, you know. And he was always Mr. Pryor to me. Yeah. You know, I never considered us peers, no matter how many times I had the opportunity to sit at his feet and just listen to the things he said. What did he teach you? What was the, were there certain things that he taught you that you still do today, or, or there was there any words of wisdom? Well, it's not like he, uh, word. He he gave me uh, respect. He gave me opportunity. He validated me as a as a performer. I I was totally green. I was not a student of the arts. I hadn't been to school, and uh, I was at Berkeley and Juilliard. I wasn't in none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when opportunities came up, and he said, "Marsha, you want to do it?" I was. You know, I was... Uh, uh, Soon you were eating flummered. spaghetti, at, spaghetti and, at the table. <laughs> but he gave me those those opportunities, and I managed to do them. So that was uh, not only the great lesson. I mean, 
And there's a whole lot of story behind he, he and I sitting across the table eating spaghetti. Um, but it, to give me that opportunity was in itself probably the best lesson I ever had. Mm. How did that change things for you, that, that opportunity? Well, I got my uh, uh, after SAG card, SAG card. I got my SAG card because of that. I got cast in a show um, called That Thing on ABC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, uh, they wanted to do a, like a laugh-in thing. And, uh, and I got cast in that. That gave me the opportunity to get an agent. I didn't have an agent at that time, so... Uh, when I they gave me the offer, I said, I need an agent. I don't know how to negotiate this. I don't want to just say, yeah. <laughs> but then, but so I called ICM, which was like the biggest agency in L.A. at the time. I called them and said, I have a, a, a gig. I need an, uh, an agent. They said, you have a gig? You need an agent. What kind of gig? <laughs> I told them it was a TV show. <laughs> it was a pilot for ABC. <laughs> and it was good. They said, hold on a minute. So they wouldn't check. Yes, there was a pilot. But, and you have a gig on this show. Is it what? You got a line? No, I'm, I'm a, one of the feature players. Really? Really? Hold on a minute. And so this went on back and forth for a little while until finally he said, hold on. We've, we've got an agent for you. And uh, he picked up the phone and told him my story. And he said, okay. And wow. he became my agent. So... About a year after I got to L.A., I was, uh, my agent was ICM, <laughs> and I had been on the Richard Pryor show, and I was doing a pilot, and I became a headliner at comedy clubs. Does, what was that like? It was, they were all new at that time. Uh -huh. Comedy clubs were, were brand new. Um, Mitzi had a club in La Jolla. Did you have a favorite club? Well... Like, did you have a preferred club? There was a club that opened in Newport Beach in 1977, around the same time all of this was happening. And I think it was 76, 77. Anyway, they opened down there. And because of the things I just mentioned, I called them up and told them I was a headliner and I wanted to work club and the whatever. And they said, okay. And so I started working down at Newport Beach at the Laugh Stop, Laugh Stop in Newport Beach, uh, and became a headliner and never looked back. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any questions? Um, yeah, so uh, just, yeah, just continue talking about uh, further into your career. Like, uh, after the, uh, how did you, like, keep getting into new shows and stuff like after your first show and then um going on after what was it you said like starting all over the place you said that you went on the Richard Pryor show and then um you got casted into your own to a different show on ABC how did you get to being able to do your own show my own show yeah well there's a lot of stuff to happen after that yeah. I went on tour with Teddy Pendergrass for about six months and then um, I entered in 1979, I entered the San Francisco, San Francisco comedy competition mm -hmm. and I won. And uh, I think Robin Williams won one year. Or he, I don't think he did win. I'm not sure, I know he entered. Dana Carvey won twice um, and it was, it had only been around for about five or six years, but that was the year it blew up. Then they had a national uh, competition in San Francisco, and same people. I won that. So by then, I had to get another agent, and I did. <laughs> and he showed up at that gig, and he said, kid, you need an agent? I said, yeah. He said, okay, give me a call. I had another agent. Yeah. And uh, I started doing uh, clubs. The franchise clubs, and we're talking about that, those new clubs, were springing up all over the country. And I was on the last stop circuit. And then I was working at the Improv, and Bud Friedman became my manager. And I started uh, doing 
the improv circuit, and I was uh, doing an evening at the improv and things like that. So, what was what was your what was your hook? It, like, what? Tell me for people who may not uh, know some of the things that you were talking about in comedy. How would you describe your comedy to somebody that would have gone to the show back then? Like, what would that have been like? I don't know. Do you, like, <laughs> I don't what know. were you talking about? Like, what I was, was do you about? remember? Do you remember like what some of the things that were that you were you were talking about? Um, any characters or any lines that kind of stuck out? Well, I was deeply closeted, so I had a line about climbing Magic Johnson. <laughs> uh, I want to climb Magic Johnson, get to the top, and sit there. And uh, I did that joke on a, a show uh, called, what was the name of that show? It had uh, Robert Townsend, Chris Rock, um, Barry Sobel, somebody else, and myself. And it was produced by Eddie Murphy. And Magic Johnson was in the audience. And I did that joke. And he laughed, and everybody laughed. And that joke became a signature thing. And I talked about uh, um, stupid stuff like uh, it was a commercial about ring around the collar and tell him to wash his neck. <laughs> that would be a nice idea. Oh, yeah. You um, want your men like like to have clean necks, right? Yeah, go, go wash <laughs> go your wash neck. It. <laughs> no, no, tell me about how to wash your clothes. <laughs> um, and so I, I just, I was always uh, dirty, but not dirty for dirty sake. It's just if things need to be said a certain way, I said it. Okay. And if you need to talk about it, I used to talk about how uh, how I got my first period. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I talked about personal things that yeah. I thought were funny. How And how did, like, people treat you and how did, how did and has it changed? Um, has comedy changed since then? Um I'm just wondering if, if like what would have worked then is working now or and how have you evolved as a comedian? The audience should never tell you what to say. So being afraid of what the audience is going to, how they're going to respond is, is going at it backwards. Mm. That's the, what's funny. Mm. How do you make them laugh? Not, you know, they're not going to like it if I say this. Right. Then there won't be anything left to say. That kind of sounds and it like gives journalism. Them too much power that they don't have. They didn't come to tell you how to be funny. They came for you to entertain them. And they're not adversaries. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of comedians approach the stage like, you know, yeah, I got to go get them, got to go. You know, they want you to do well. Nobody pays money to go out and I hope this guy flops. I hope this chick is not funny at all. I just want to sit and stare at her all night. <laughs> I mean, that's not the mindset. So yeah. uh, I think we talk ourselves into a reality that ain't there. Right. They want to have fun. That's what they came out for. So go out with the mindset you want to have fun with them. You can't mess up. You can't do it wrong because you're doing you. So go do you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So when you were, um, okay, so tell me about Roz and how Roz came to be and how you got into onto Night Court and Night Court just kind of reconstituted and you just made an appearance on there. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that character. Because a lot of people, young Zeriel doesn't know Night Court very well, so we'll have to kind of educate a little bit about, about sorry, Zeriel. <laughs> Uh, about what Night Court was and what, how how your character came to be. Uh, two women died. Yeah, <laughs> that was sad. That's pretty much what happened. I mean, yeah. I don't mean to laugh at the circumstance, but that's the answer to the question. 
Um, Night Court was part of the, the Thursday night lineup that will never, ever be repeated. It that was, was the only night I was allowed to watch it, TV. It, Thursday night. We only had three channels. Must see TV <laughs> yeah. was probably the last great programming yeah. coup ever. I mean, the Cosby show was bringing in I know. 50 share, you know, just numbers that nobody is getting now. Um, and that block of, of TV um, was historic. And Night Court anchored it before Hill Street Blues. Yep, it was great. It was four comics. Four so com- up my dad's alley. <laughs> and Hill Street Blues. And uh, the show had just hit its, its prime. I mean, it was the third season. And um, people had discovered it, and, and it, was, it had its momentum. John Larroquette had been nominated for three Emmys and won three times. Know. That must have been a fabulous... I mean, it was just electric, you know, and I'm uh, following... I had done a pilot with Vicki Lawrence and uh, and Lauren Tweez, I think, um, uh, called uh, Anything for Love. Anyway, and there was a character played by Flo Halep, and Flo Halep ended up replacing Selma Diamond who had been the first bailiff, and Flo took over, and then she died, all on hiatus, yeah. okay? And so then they called me and said, hey, you want to audition for Night Court? But <laughs> can you tell young Zuriel about who Roz was and, like, how you kind of played Roz a little bit? I'm, I'm trying. I mean, what do you want to know? Yeah. I, mean, I played, I did what yeah. they wrote. I didn't uh, yeah, but, but there is... You, the facial expressions were just so spot on. Like the whole room could be a complete in chaos and you would just be like, I'm not responding to this. No, I wasn't a part yeah. of that group. I didn't yeah. come in as a part of that group. Yeah. And I didn't feel like Roz was a, a part of, of the, I thought she was uh, an employee, somebody who showed up, did her job and went home. And so all this shenanigans and stuff you guys are into doesn't affect me. <laughs> and so that's how I, I played it. it yeah. Not. Well, so I grew I was, up watching it and it was great because that was the night that I got to stay up late. Well, I thought that <laughs> Roz's job was to walk in and see the cast in some kind of chaos and in, in one of their movable knots where they would all move together as a group. And to someone, and she would look and say, "You know, that's that's stupid." Yeah. <laughs> and then walk out of the room, and then at the end of the show, when they, you know, resolve it after all the chaos, I Ross comes back and says, "I told you it was stupid," and that would be the end of the show. <laughs> that was my job. That was so that. So when you look back at that, tell me what that meant to you. Would was that one of your more coveted roles that you've played? Was that kind of like a, eh, it was okay? And how was it back? How was it coming back to? Which one? When what you made you? the cameo. Oh, that was, uh, it was like, uh, I said it was like having a dream come true that you didn't know you had. I mean, I had no uh, plans in any far reaches of my imagination for to do a cameo in a new night court. It just never crossed my mind. Right. And when the show got picked up and, and everything, and people were like, are you going to be on it? I'm like, they probably don't want me on the show. I mean, that's that's a new direction. They're taking a new place. Best of luck to them. So I was, uh, I was happy to do it. And it was... Uh, it has a great energy. I think uh, I think that show is going to grow. Um, I enjoyed being on it, and I love John Larroquette. Uh, um, and I, so, and Melissa, the whole cast, they're just... It's been fun. I There's a lot a of good chemistry. Show. I think it's a great... Uh, they have great chemistry. Yeah. So I, I predict it's going to be around for a minute. So you're, you're in Kenosha tonight. Tonight. What can people expect? Me. All in all your glory. And me, I'm bringing all of me. I'm not leaving nothing uh, at home. 
Nice, nice. So did you have any more questions, Mr. Zuria? Um, so it, we also, well, the most, the most things I know about you are from this like little piece of paper I have right here. Cause, uh, unfortunately I'm not as old as you guys. <laughs> so, it's okay. But then, like, I, let I'm me not just, as old just, as you. You know, a word of advice from somebody who gets older, there's a whole lot of stuff that happened right. before you got here. I, I, I <laughs> I'm just saying. You might want to, you know, look into some of that. I know. And, uh, yeah, I was just, like, looking at this, like, brief, like, biography of you. It said uh, you, like, start. you came out as gay after a, literally an entire career of being in the closet. I wanted to know how that felt for you to finally come out and be your true self. It was terrifying. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely terrifying. And, it, and I can't imagine uh, uh, have having done it when Ellen and, and Rosie did. I, I just cannot imagine having that kind of uh, uh, bravery and courage because uh, 10, 20 years later, it was still um, traumatic. It was kind of, you know, you, you, it's like you have to step out on that ledge and hope you fly. And fortunately, I, I kind of took off. And right. Broke. And what, what year is this around? Like the, like what, like 95, 2000? What, when it came out? Yeah, and uh, when all that was happening? Was that no, that was like 2015, 14, 12, something like that. Yeah. Really? Oh, this is really recent? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even, I had no idea. Yeah, you were here for that. I was here for that. <laughs> I think I was in like third grade. Yeah. But what uh, about pizza and politics? Yeah, I was just about to get yeah. into that. So yeah, it seemed. Some, you'll have to come see that. <laughs> 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 They're not really related, but. They, They're not? Yeah, no. Well, there's good pizza in Kenosha, I can tell you that. Okay. There's good Kaisers. pizza here. Kaiser's. Is Kaiser's? Probably, my favorite place is Kaiser's. Ah. Is it deep Never. dish or is it. No tavern. No, it's it's like got the best like uh, cracker crust. It's yeah. it's really good. Cut in square. You know what? It's been a while since I've had. I think it is. Yeah, but it's it's really good. Okay, that's really kind of like yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. So, Mr. Zuriel. Yes. Anything else? Any wisdom you would like to impart? Wisdom for get, her. Get from <laughs> oh, get from mind? her. Yeah, so uh, me personally, I would really like, I'm really interested in a career in Hollywood and uh, making my own like shows and stuff. I wonder if there's any advice you could give me into just getting started with that type of career. Don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah. You, you never know. You, you know if you quit that nothing is going to happen. All right. But if you don't quit, you don't know what might happen. So no matter how hard it gets, no matter how discouraged you get, no matter how, how, what other people say, no matter how it looks, don't quit. Okay. I think, thank you very much. You're welcome. Do you, uh, you enjoying racing so far? So far, so good. You missed, you missed a little bit. Uh, we had like a anniversary celebration about two blocks away. Oh, what uh, did I miss? Uh, birthday cake birthday oh, cake well. giant speech everybody like it seems like like half the community is down there right now well well i have to you know work that in next year <laughs> <laughs> well it's 175 of racine so yeah okay. hundreds of times yeah so good anything else you wanted to add that maybe we didn't ask did we cover the bases did we do okay right. no I, yeah. I i found out on the way here that there are um there are uh, beavers. There are. Right. I, we have know. beavers. Beavers, badgers. See? The thing. See the things you learn? I know. Nah, I, I couldn't even Cheese, tell you that. Cheese, gouda. And, but what's gouda. it got to do with beavers? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. I thought we were just beaver. bantering. I'd like I don't a cheese beaver, please. <laughs> anyway, uh, and, and the uh, Kenosha Comedy Club is a very nice club, okay. and it would be great to see as many people come out and see what I do, you yeah. know. My mother told me it's a poor dog who can't wag his own tail. But I have a, you know, trouble tooting my own horn. So I, I'm gonna just 
you know, woman up and say, I am really good at what I do. So come on out and see you. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Fun. Right. Sounds fun. All right. All right. Am I allowed into a comedy club? I don't know. You'll have to talk to your like, mom about am it. I allowed? <laughs> I don't know. Do they let 16 year olds in? I'm you 17. You should ask. Oh, you're 17. Uh, I don't you know. should ask they Mr. Frank food. back. Is he awake? There. Frank? Oh, <laughs> uh, Oh, just wait. All right. I thought I heard you snore back there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, it was so good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I really you appreciate much. all of the time and energy you put coming out here and getting up those stairs. Oh, you really want to leave? <laughs> Down is easier. Down is easier. <laughs> I think that applies to everything. It does. It does. All right. Are we good? Cut. Did I mention the Kenosha Comedy Club?